What's up guys? I want to do a quick video here on a recent tuxedo that I made. Uh, this is actually a tuxedo for yours truly. This is something I kind of made sort of model after what James Bond would do. I spent a little bit, perhaps too much time, kind of researching uh, throughout the different films what James Bond, and not just uh, the current actor, but uh, all the actors, um, kind of went for in their black tie attire. So first and foremost, this is obviously a shawl lapel. It is one of more formal uh, options, uh, the peak lapel being the other one that you could probably do. But I really think that the elegance in a shawl lapel is just super cool. And the fabric here, in daylight, as we are filming this, this is a very uh, midnight blue, but kind of a textured, um, interesting weave here. So it's not your typical black or you know very basic solid midnight blue. It has kind of a, some character to it. So for instance, like a pre-dinner happy hour, um, kind of meet and greet type event, it's going to look a lot different from the other guys wearing black tie attire. But as the evening progresses and it gets darker and darker, and especially inside under artificial lighting, this looks very, very dark. It's a really cool look. So that's the fabric. Shawl lapel, obviously tuxedo, we got the satin here. And something I um, kind of draw your attention to, on tuxedos we always have a little satin covering the button. And so we see it on the single button closure on a single breasted tuxedo jacket. And we also see the buttons on the sleeve. I opted for three uh, working buttons on this particular jacket, just to have it be a little bit different. Four is totally fine, I think five is fine as well. Uh, two would be a little too casual in my opinion, but you could definitely try it if you wanted to. But the, the whole idea here is that these are satin covered as well, because that is what a tuxedo should have. Something else a tuxedo should have is a very clean look, and you get that through having a besom pocket. A a AKA no flap pocket with a very nice clean silhouette. That's kind of what we're getting with these pockets. Now, sometimes you'll see a satin facing on the pocket here as well. So you'll see it obviously on the lapel facing, but sometimes it'll match on the besom pocket. And sometimes it'll match up here on the chest pocket. It'll be like this strip. That's something that I consciously decided I did not want on this jacket. It's something that you see now and again, it's totally fine I think, but I wanted something that was very, very clean and sophisticated and not having kind of distracting, in my opinion, a little bits of satin here and there. So what else? On the inside, obviously we have a, a My Company's label, but the lining here, I wanted something that would match and complement the cloth itself, and so that's why I stuck with a blue. And Paisley, I just think is kind of a really elegant solution for any kind of a celebratory jacket, just like this one. And something we did is the stitching here is in a contrast fabric to kind of show a little bit. I think it's kind of cool just to have a, a nod to the construction, and that's something I've always thought was kind of fun. On the other side, uh, I got a little creative here, and instead of putting my name, I put for official use only uh, to reiterate that this is no ordinary tuxedo. And as we go back out, something I kind of want to, yeah, let's go over this as well. So usually there will be a side vent, right? You have one on both sides. And one thing you don't want to do is have a center vent on the back because for a uh, tuxedo, a center vent is too much like a sport coat. It's going to be too casual looking. A uh, center vent, and even the side vents also, were kind of originally constructed to um, kind of aid in riding a horse. You had to have a coat that could kind of uh, come up and be, get, get a little mobility, and that's why vents are now a thing on suits. But before that, when clothing was a lot more formal, and especially today when, you know, black tie attire, for instance, you'll be very, very dressed up, we don't see vents on our nice jackets. And that's why this one does not have a vent. This is a seam. Does it matter? Not so much. I mean, yes, you can obviously, obviously still sit in a tuxedo jacket, um, but it won't have that um, kind of added mobility 
that if you wanted to, totally fine, but just make sure you get the side vents. Okay, anything else? I'm trying to think. I think this kind of covers it. Um, what you can see is that this is a, a full canvas construction suit. It has a lot of um, uh, real structure to it without being overly so. It is still a very comfortable and very elegant um, tuxedo. So as you're building one, hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of guidance on not only what I did, obviously, but what James Bond would do. Uh, the takeaway being to keep things kind of simple, to not go too crazy. This isn't a time to do, for instance, contrast stitching or anything too wild. Uh, black tie attire is really all about doing, I think, the fundamentals really, really well. And from that, you'll have a fantastic look that will just kind of naturally shake out. Questions, comments, sound off uh, down below. I answer everything. And don't forget to uh, subscribe. We've got many more videos coming. We've been kind of hit, hit and miss here for a little while. It's been really busy, but we definitely have a lot more coming in 2018. So sign up. All right, guys, thanks for your attention.